Hello, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be talking about artist commissions, probably something a lot of you guys are familiar with, and if not, I will go over what commissions are in a bit. So more specifically in this video, I'm going to propose that doing commissions is probably the absolute worst use of your time as an independent artist. And before you protest and say that I'm crazy and that commissions are great, just let me explain. So firstly, um, like the title suggests, this is in fact my last commission ever for the foreseeable future. And I'm just gonna briefly explain as to what this commission is, how it came about and who is depicted in it. So the reason why this somehow became my last commission, even though I stopped taking commissions years ago actually, is because I agreed to do something for a friend of a friend that was somewhere along the lines of client work, even though it wasn't really. But since the whole thing ended up kind of falling through on one end, um, it ended up just being a private commission because of a bunch of various factors. And what I ended up doing was replacing the character who was originally supposed to be in the center of this piece with my girl Sweet. You may recognize her from some stuff that I've posted on my Instagram account and I even have a couple of videos here that feature her as a prominent character. So I'm not going to get into details as to what went, went down with this particular commission, but I did finish it very recently, a couple of days ago actually. And while I was in the midst of working on it, it prompted me to remember what it was like working on commissions, taking commissions back in the day, why I stopped doing it in the first place, and why it was the correct decision for me to stop doing commissions in general. And I thought that it might make for kind of an interesting topic to talk to you guys about, because generally what I've seen being discussed in the art community revolves around things like tips for taking commissions, how to price your artwork, where to get customers, etc. So I want to talk about the entire other end of this issue. So before I get into it, I just want to quickly define what commissions are from what I can understand. So a commission typically involves a transaction between an artist and one of their followers or one of the people who admire their artwork where the artist sets a price and lets their audience know what kind of commissions they are willing to do and basically determine all their rules and prices and timelines and then their audience will contact them privately in order to facilitate this transaction at their request. So hopefully that was brief enough and easy to understand. And I also want to highlight some differences between commissions and client work because it can be a bit tricky because they are such similar things because client work is essentially the same where it is a transaction of services for a monetary compensation. But in the case of clients, there's usually a little bit more paperwork involved. There's some back and forth. Clients are usually companies, can sometimes be individuals, but more often than not, they are companies and the services that they require are for some sort of commercial use. Therefore, there's some more complications and it, there are more um, constrictions in terms of timeline and what the client wants and in terms of what you're responsible for. So. As far as I can tell, the biggest difference would be the level of control that the client has over what artwork you produce for them. So with commissions, it tends to be a bit more casual and it tends to be a person who is a fan of your work requesting you to draw their character of choice or something along the lines of that and you pretty much having the freedom of picking everything else whereas for client work they're usually looking for something very specific and oftentimes you will have to adjust your style adjust your timeline and just just adjust yourself a lot in order to um, fit in with the clients needs. So hopefully that was a good enough differentiation between the two concepts, but in this video I'm mostly going to be talking about private commissions between artists and their audience. So now that I've gotten the definition out of the way, I'm going to tell you guys my brief history with commissions. It spans a very long time, so I'm definitely going to avoid getting into too many details when it comes to this, but I started taking commissions when I was about 
15 and I did not charge very much for them, but I am very grateful to the people that commissioned me back then because it definitely helped to boost my confidence as an artist and actually uh, make me believe that I can at some point learn how to make legitimate money off of what I'm doing. So yeah, after that, I basically took commissions now and then, maybe once or twice a year, and I kind of treated them as an emergency type of situation because as much as it was fun at first, I almost immediately realized that commissions are difficult for me to deal with because they are very demanding. You have to finish them as quickly as you can. Keeping people waiting is obviously very tough and generally I emulated the way that everybody else was going about it. So I would see people open a call for commissions, have slots, the slots would be filled and then there might be a waiting list and then it was pretty much a waiting game for everybody else from then. So that's how I went about it as well. And the pressure of having a list was big. The pressure of having people wait for their commission was big too. And all those things made me almost immediately develop a love-hate relationship with commissions. Because even though it felt great to be earning some money off of drawing, at the same time, it did feel a little bit like an ankle chain, especially since I was a student. I was a high school student at the time that I started doing them. And I still did them all the way through college. I spent like six years in post-secondary, so it was a long time. And then even a couple of years after college, I still took some commissions all the way up until a couple of years ago. And obviously with this one being the last one, but this one was kind of like an outlier because it was a bit accidental. Now that you know the gist of my experience with commissions over the years, I'm going to jump into talking about why I came to the conclusion that commissions are the absolute worst use of my time as an independent artist. And I'm also even going to go as far as to say that I do regret having done so many of them in my time as an artist. And mostly I'm going to say this because one of the things that I have been regretting for years now is the fact that I have not done more personal art over the years. And I'm going to touch on this probably many times through the rest of this video. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is the fact that commissions have a very limited use. So it's essentially a single purpose use of your time and it's something that resembles a 9 to 5 job and there's essentially no investment. It's not an it's not a, an investment in many ways. You could see how potentially perhaps a commission that is well done might serve as a good portfolio piece and perhaps you could put it into an art book that's usually within your automatic rights as an artist but anything beyond that is where it gets into a gray area like for instance i have had a couple of commissioners who were very kind and supportive over the years and they were more than happy to let me make prints of the pieces that they commissioned and that was extremely nice of them but usually that's not the case usually people that commission you expect their commission piece to be theirs only and they generally wouldn't want to see it reproduced or being available to um, any other person or whatever if you know what i mean so that essentially makes a single commission only good for one purpose and that is it is the commission and the hours that you spent on it are not a future investment into your artistic career and i'm going to touch on the topic of treating your time as an investment instead of a single purpose use of hours or whatever it's not it's kind of a clunky way to put this concept i'm sure there's a better way to word it but i'll explain it better in a bit. So the second thing that I really don't like about commissions is the limited price range. And let me talk about that. By limited price range, I mean that if you want to grow as an artist, if you want to increase your prices, facilitate the demand and obviously earn more and expand all your artistic activities and also want to support yourself, you run the unnecessary risk of alienating your audience. And this is something that I, I really, really want to address. And I have seen many, many instances of artists charging 
uh, higher prices for their commissions, at least higher than you generally see, and that being met with a lot of public criticism from random people in their audience. First of all, I don't want to go too hard on the people that are being judgmental, but I do think that they are in the wrong, and I think that they should probably keep their opinions to themselves. If you see an artist who's charging an amount for commissions that to you seems excessive, just keep it to yourself. It doesn't matter what you think, it's the price that they chose. And if there are people that are willing to pay that much, that is their choice as well. And your two cents about it being too much or overblown or not worth it is something that nobody needs to hear. And you should probably rethink as to why you're so bothered by somebody else's evaluation of their own work in the first place. So there's that, but I do also think that the, the reason that this even crops up in the first place is because unlike client work, commissions tend to be more of a public affair and that is the biggest reason why I wanted to differentiate client work from commissions because when people get into the territory of valuing their time more, becoming more um, in demand, etc, etc, sometimes it can get weird when the commission pricing bleeds into more client-like pricing that it, it it's obviously on the higher end and people just take it weirdly like i can easily see how as an audience member member when you have no idea how much work a person is doing what their living costs are like what kind of life they lead you can do some weird inflated math in your head and decide that they make way more money than they should be or something like that which i think is always a bad conclusion to come to but i'm even talking about it from my own point of view when i was um significant when i was broke essentially and when i was still a student or when i was a teenager um in high school i would every time i saw people charge a lot for commissions it would kind of stir up a lot of negative thoughts like i i was concerned and I didn't understand why people could charge so much and all those things kind of stem from it being public and anyways before I totally descend into a tangent about pricing and the negative effects of underpricing yourself etc I'm just gonna pivot into the next point about commissions that personally bothers me and it is along the lines of what I was talking about just now and it is the massive price range difference because it is a completely unchecked market and it is public which is very strange so what you will often see in regards to commissions in the art community on different platforms or whatnot is just the crazy range of pricing that people have for their art but this doesn't even necessarily reflect their skill either so it makes the whole thing very confusing especially for less experienced artists who have no idea how to price their art so inexperienced artists tend to be more insecure on average about their work and for this reason it is much more common to see artists underpricing themselves rather than quote-unquote overpricing and I do think it's a very regressive practice. The general observable pattern overall is to keep people down and affordable instead of encouraging them to raise their wages and aim for a life that's more than just getting by with the bare minimum income. This is a whole other topic in itself, honestly, and specifically in regards to the silly romanticization of the artist's struggle working insane hours and earning a trash income and being reduced to begging slash pity party tactics to pay bills. I see this happening very frequently, unfortunately, but I shall come back to that one in a future video. And to clarify, uh, pricing transparency is not an inherently bad thing, I don't think. But like I said, there seems to be little to no criticism over prices being too low, whereas high prices tend to be less common but cause some public friction. So overall, I think the online art world could use with less glorification of the struggling small artist cliche and more towards being an artist is a perfectly normal and potentially lucrative occupation, which unsurprisingly has salaries that range from mediocre to extremely high and it's just like any other professional field. I'm always surprised as to when people defend their choice for char charging way too little for 
their commissions because it does affect the people who charge more as well and it is exactly what prompts the very judgmental comments that some audience people might have about the high prices where they deem it crazy because they have seen some other artists with comparable skill level who charges much less and it creates this very very strange dynamic that kind of propagates a lot of negativity and weirdness so in some ways there is a good reason as to why it's often difficult to find out how much people charge in professional settings and this would probably be the reason why and i don't necessarily think that it's an all-around bad thing so to move on to the next point uh, i wanted to talk about the fact that commissions between an artist and an audience or a single individual is essentially a system that does not reward exceeding expectations in a proportional manner. So what I mean by that is when you work on your personal project and you're investing your soul and your like everything that you care about into this art piece and it's not hinging on how much you're getting paid for it or how many hours you have to spend on it because presumably maybe you want to make prints out of it maybe you want to put it into an art book or maybe you just want to share it with people it is a riskier route to take at first but at least you won't feel constricted by how much effort you can pour into any single piece of art and thus it will often have a radically better result than a commissioned piece because a commissioned piece is something where you have to take time into consideration and when the price is predetermined and the style is predetermined and all the limitations are set in place even if you go above and beyond what you what's expected of you and when you try really really hard to make it just a completely outstanding piece and blow the expectations out um completely it will not necessarily result in any sort of um compensation because sometimes it's true that clients are very nice sorry clients i keep saying clients um people that commission you your audience members will be very nice and generous and they will tip you but from my experience personally it's a bit of a rare occurrence and usually when i went above and beyond is because i just really really wanted to make the piece as best as i can and to inject more I don't know, polish into it if I see that I can, and I would completely lose track of time. And essentially, that's how I learned to devalue my time because no matter how much time I spend on it or how nice it turned out to be, it was already paid for. And I obviously didn't expect to like up the price. Like it's not something you can retroactively change. And therefore, it, it really prevents you from being able to accurately assess whether to put in more time or like less time or whatever and it's an overall not a very rewarding um system i think when it comes to that i don't know if i was able to explain that properly but lastly one of the other things or not lastly but the next thing is that commissions despite them seemingly being easier to come across unlike client work which you have to just generally wait for more often than not Commissions are still very unpredictable, and I'm mostly talking about from my own personal experience, but over all the years that I took commissions, sometimes, um, obviously, I usually made sure not to do them too close to each other, if that makes any sense. Like, I would take batches of commissions, and there would generally be like a year between those batches, so by the time that they become available again, there has been enough time for interest to be generated again. So I usually had a decent time with that, but there have been a couple of instances where there just happened to be very low demand at the time that I opened commissions and I would only get a couple. And unfortunately it wasn't, it just was totally not in line with the expectations that I had. And that made me understand that with commissions, just like anything else, you can't like basically you can't rely on it always to be something of a stable income because it's just not like it, it wasn't stable you, you never know how many people will be interested in a commission at any given time uh so there's that aspect of it as well but lastly the thing that i want to talk about that is a absolute downside for me is that 
the whole idea of commissions essentially enforces a I love what this artist can do for me attitude from the audience or that's essentially the concept that like it, it's it's like a transactional thing where instead as an independent artist what I think is very important to cultivate as an overall uh, sentiment in your audience is I love what this artist does and that's it not what they can do for me but just what they do and generally that's how I feel about my favorite artists what speaks to me the most is their personal work because it's just so much more intense and it looks so much more thought out and it, it there's so much emotion that gets injected into an artist's personal work that I think commissions always pale in comparison even if I'm talking about artwork that comes from the same artist because there's always going to be an emotional disconnect when you're being told what to draw because I think at the end of the day being an artist is like if you have a calling to doing that more often than not you don't have a calling to draw something that you're being told to draw it's it's usually something that comes from somewhere else entirely and it is at the bottom of, of it all about self-expression so those things something like that is very very important to me and i do think that commissions as much as they do have some positives which i will talk about next um really do end up robbing you in the long run even though uh, you might think that they are such a blessing, which I did for a very long time. So now I want to talk about why a lot of artists do start with commissions and and do prefer them and why it's such a well-spread or well-known concept in the general art community. So like I've mentioned, my history with commissions is very long and how I came across commissions and why I started doing them in the first place is very simple. I was young, I was entering this community which obviously had people on top, the people that everybody looked up to and those people seemed to be doing commissions and thus I was just simply following in their footsteps because I was also interested in earning some money from my art. And I do think there are actually many positives they came with that and I think it's perfectly fine to start with commissions. One of the best things that I learned from doing commissions was the discipline that it takes to complete something and make it presentable. I think I owe that to commissions to some degree. Even though I was always inclined to put a lot of effort into my personal work and I did finish personal pieces, I still did it at a much much lower rate than when it came to commissions because with commissions there was an expectation from someone else and I always, maybe it's a personal trait, but I always had the thing where I did not want to disappoint a person who put their faith in me. And so I put a lot of effort into completing art and I think for, for many, many years, the vast majority of completed, finished, polished art was all commissions for me. And that is something, as I've mentioned earlier, was a bit of a love-hate thing. And in retrospect, I think I should have just moved on from commissions earlier than I did. But, you know, who knows what would have happened. It was a long time ago. Let's move on. So another thing that I think is nice about commissions is the aspect of kind of building a relationship between yourself and the people that love your art aka your audience i do think that is nice um and i have spoken to matt many like absolutely amazing people through commissions and i'm still so thankful to them for supporting me and I also wanted to say that just because I'm talking about commissions in a negative light overall in this video doesn't mean that there's nothing that I think is good about them and doesn't mean that I did not appreciate a lot of the contact that I've made with my audience during the time at which I was still doing commissions. So the next thing I want to talk about is why it's important to reevaluate goals and consider going in a different direction. So like I said, there have been many positive things that I got out of commissions and I, I do think that 
um, it is a very good starter for an artist, especially when you're much younger, you don't have much exposure to client work and you're unlikely to be contacted by bigger clients. Yeah, but that being said, when you get to a point where you feel a little bit more established and you, you're starting to gather a bit of an audience, I think it's very, very important to pivot towards what you want to do ultimately. And I will always go back to this because the more years pass by, the more I notice that my only regret is not putting more time and effort into what I truly want to do with my art and what my ultimate goals are and it's kind of a battle that I'm still actively fighting because I'm so used to always prioritizing other things that I just keep doing it even though I'm getting slightly better at making the art that I want to make I still keep going back to doing the things that are secondary so anyways that's an entirely different topic but that being said, I think it's very important to reevaluate what you're doing with your art, how you're choosing to make money off of it, and take your time to really understand the fact that you can and you will steer the direction of your career. You, you can, you have the power to shape what your career is going to be like. So if you really want the type of art career that mostly revolves around you making personal artwork that you care about, that is something that you can absolutely do if you work hard and you build up your skills and you really believe in what you're doing an audience will find you that reson that resonates with your message and your preferences. So that's just something that I think everybody should know and that commissions are by no means the only way to earn a living as an artist. And I do think that they are not a good time investment if you want to be independent and build your own personal body of work. And yeah, at the end of the day, I also wanted to mention that you can do whatever you want. And I think there are a lot of artists or there are definitely some artists that prefer doing commissions and they like the structure and they like building more and more relationships with their audience and uh, draw things at the audience's request. That's totally fine, too. It all depends on you and what you want. I'm mostly talking about it from my own personal experience and my own perspective and like i've mentioned many, many times i am mostly interested at the end of the day in making my own personal work and exploring that side of things so that being said to me commissions are a gigantic waste of time unfortunately and i'm working very hard to keep reminding myself that i should have more faith in my own original stuff and just keep going with it and that being said this this commission is kind of interesting because it is a commission but it does feature my original character named sweet so it was kind of a weird one but when i was working on it i still felt the chains of having to do it because somebody was waiting for it and it's something that i had to do but i had no plans for it outside of it being a finished commission for a person so there's that and now that it's done i'm excited to dive back into my own original work and i will definitely be sharing all of that with you guys and so thank you so much for watching my video i never say this but if you like my content please leave a like and i will see you in my next one bye